Welcome back to part 6 of barycentric coordinates and in today we're going to look at uh, distance formula and uh, the equation of a circle because you know just like in Cartesian coordinates those two are pretty much related. So if you have a displacement vector PQ we want to consider its length and um, we know that its length squared is equal to pq dot pq because this is true of any vector see part zero of the series and if we have that pq the vector is equal to x, y, z. Um, I discussed in previous videos that the sum of x plus y plus z is equal to zero because you're subtracting the coordinates of two homogenized points and their coordinates sum up to one. So x, y, and z add up to zero because you basically have two, the difference of two sums, each of which equals one. And we know that this point can be expressed in vector form with, you know, x a um, plus y b plus z c. And um, so you just plug that in here and take the dot product and use using the fact that x plus y plus z is equal to zero. Uh, so I'm not going to go through all the steps because it's pretty similar to the proof of EFFT. But um, the first step is to tra uh, translate the circumcenter to be the origin, also known as the zero vector. And what this gives you is the distance formula of a displacement vector, which is negative a squared yz minus b squared cx minus c squared xy. All right, pretty simple. And um, that's it. So now we're on to the equation of a circle, which is um, just like in Cartesian coordinates. You take a point x, y, z with a center, and uh, our center is i, j, k, let's say. Then the distance between those two points has to be some fixed constant r. Now the difference, now we can express that difference by taking the displacement vector between the two points and using the distance formula and setting it equal to r squared. And um, if you look in the, under the description of part one you'll see a link to the document I'm basing the series off of and you will see the full written out equation uh, with my handwriting I don't want to write out that whole equation but you essentially each term will be like y minus j um, z minus k such and such and after that you would actually expand everything and um, what it comes out to be is that you have some constant on the left and then um, what I'll call D which basically looks like the distance formula but it's for the point of XYZ so it's it's basically this formula but for a normal point and not a displacement vector and then 
plus some constants times each of the variables because the center is each um, each coordinate of the center is just its own constant um, so we have a spew of constants and from here we can use a trick where we um, assume that x plus y plus z is equal to 1 so it's a normal standard point so that we can multiply c on the left by x plus y plus z without any repercussion because we're just multiplying by 1 that's perfectly allowed and then so we have 0 is equal to d I'll, I'll just d underline plus and now we have um, we can say ux plus vy plus wz and then we can multiply by 1 again we can multiply x plus y plus z so this is sort of manipulating homogeneity and because we're multiplying by 1 but we're getting a distance formula that or a circle formula that actually works for unhomogenized points. Why? Because now that we have sort of these terms, these are all degree 1, and these are all degree 1, if you multiply them together everything here will be degree 2. And d is all degree 2 because we're multiplying two variables together. So if we plug in unhomogenized points we will still get that it will be on the circle. So this is the circle formula. And it is homogeneous degree 2. And the degree really doesn't matter. I'm just specifying how you would see that it's homogeneous. Because we have 0 on this side, and everything on this side is degree 2. And now it's pretty straightforward to find the equation of the circle of the uh, the circle that we care about so much in geometry, which is the circumcircle. The circumcircle is the circle that passes through A, B, and C. And so, just like with the equation of a line, we can plug in each um, each thing of a, b, and c to get um, to find out what y, v, and w are. Now notice that d, this underline d, if we were to plug in any one of the vert vertices of the triangle into this equation, we have two things that are zero. And each of these terms contains at least one of these zeros, so the whole thing is zero. So when we plug in A, for example, this D is just zero. So we have zero equals zero plus. Similarly, y, these YZs, these YZ terms, Y and Z terms will go to zero, and we're left with U x times x and this just implies that u equals 0 and we can do the same trick for b and c and we will get that v is equal to 0 and that w is equal to zero. 
so this whole term right here for the circumcircle is zero meaning that we just have zero equals d underline and for our sakes we can get rid of all these negatives so we also have that zero is equal to a squared yz plus b squared zx plus c squared um, xy. This is the equation of the circumcircle. And so that will that's it for this video. Um, so distance formula and just like in normal Cartesian coordinates we use the distance formula to get the f formula are uh, the equation of a circle which you know in my opinion pretty much well at least for the circumcircle which is the circle we use the most look pretty much identical and just a note on how uh, I memorize the circle for uh, equation I think of it as, as distance plus line times sum because notice that this is the equation of a line this is the sum of the coordinates and this is sort of the distance for the same distance formula and also if you're curious I know in my EFFT video I use a lot of cyclic sums this is equal to the cyclic sum of negative a squared yz anyway um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video